Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse, a.k.a. BGFH. And I am back for another kind of a channel update video. But I'm also here to talk a little bit about my past experiences in general with employment. Because October is Disability Employment Awareness Month. And... Um, I had been meaning to try to record something about this topic earlier this month, but with it, it's just been a crazy month, let's just put it that way. Um, <clears throat> this month has been pretty busy, pretty crazy, and um, the last, you know, next month is going to be also quite busy for me. So, yeah, anyway, quick channel update. Um, a lot of new content on the channel. Uh, we are actually, we broke 1,250 subscribers. So we're at uh, 1,258 as of current count. So that's pretty cool. Seem to be drawing a few people in. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, thanks for uh, stopping by and subscribing. And uh, again, thanks to everyone who has been uh, subscribed for quite a while as well. Um, like I said, a lot of different stuff this month, um, kind of a few different things. So with the October windows update that came out uh, at the very beginning of this month, I did a couple of videos on its new features, uh, and updates and fixes and things like that. So I have one video that's dedicated to the low vision aspects of the update. So things like narrator, color filters, all those types of things. And my other video is kind of exploring some of the new and revamped uh, features of narrator. And yeah, you know, it's getting quite, quite good. Um, they have a new startup wizard that new users can go through. Um, They've redone the controls, uh, the keyboard commands, to be more like other screen readers, which will be helpful for longtime screen reader users to adapt to Narrator. And I have confirmed since recording that video that, yes, they are working on um, other browser updates, like uh, browser compatibility, like Chrome and stuff like that. But um, right now, <clears throat> it is mainly supporting Edge. Because I know it used to support Internet Explorer, but that browser is kind of at the end of its life. Like, it still works. It's getting a few security updates here and there. But it's not really getting active development. You know, it's going to be sunsetted here pretty quick. Uh, so they're not really devoting compatibility to that browser with Narrator. And that's understandable. So Edge it is for now, but we should have some other stuff coming in the future. So... Definitely check out those videos. Those are under the Assistive Technology Spotlight playlist. Um, of course, October is also Halloween, so I've been doing a few horror games here and there. And as Halloween approaches, it's like about, what, six days away or so as I'm recording this. And I'm basically going to be uh, ramping up to Halloween. I've got several other videos that... Um, there, there's quite a few games and stuff that are really cool that are coming up here. So I'm probably going to be doing kind of like a video a day leading up to uh, Halloween, probably starting today with this particular video, and then moving into the Halloween stuff. So yeah, um, lots of horror stuff to look forward to. we got some VR things. We've got some uh, classic horror games. Um Again, we've had one or two accessible horror games already earlier this month. I miss, I'm still playing Fear, F-E-E-R, for iOS, this zombie runner game. And it's really, really good. Um, if you haven't picked up Fear, F-E-E-R, for iOS or Android, it is also on Android, um, go pick it up because... <laughs> It has got, I mean, it's not one of those where you just play it, you go, okay, you play through a story, and then you're done. Uh, it is actually, you know, it, it's very, very replayable. There's missions, there's, you try to see how far you can get, there's upgrades, 
all kinds of good stuff. Highly recommend that game. Uh, so yeah, a lot of Halloween videos coming up. Um, also, within the last week, on Monday, and I, God, I wish I would have... Somehow I didn't know that the thing was going to be streamed. Otherwise, if I would have known that, I might have taken Monday off. Um, the Game Accessibility Conference had its first session in Europe this year. And also a first, it was actually streamed. Well, they're several hours ahead of us, so I didn't realize it until I was checking Twitter when I got to work on Monday morning. And I saw posts about like it going, I'm like, oh no, it's online. Man, I totally would have watched a lot of that. But I did have a couple of sessions on in the background. Uh, there was a session on the Tomb Ra Shadow of the Tomb Raider accessibility features, which I kind of tuned into a bit of that while I could. And uh, that was really interesting. I, again, I covered that earlier in the channel on like September, I believe, when it came out. God, time is flying. And then I caught like the end presentation from uh, Cherry talking about, you know, different aspects of accessibility and, uh, you know, like thing kind of things that reactions that people have about how accessibility is, is in, people are included or not included. Uh, and that was a really interesting talk. So I believe they're on the YouTube channel. Um, you look up Game Accessibility or GA Conf 2018. I believe the whole eight-hour spiel, the whole archive, is up. I'm hoping that they will split it up into its smaller sessions so we can more easily digest all of that. But um, I think it are, is it is there, so you can kick back and marathon it if you wish. So because of GA Conf this week, I thought, well, you know, I, I this last weekend I did a fired up a mixer stream for Soul Calibur VI, which is actually really fun so far, having a good time with that. And I know a lot of uh, blind and low vision players are interested in fighting games, so you might want to check this one out. Uh, it's available on all your modern platforms, uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Not Switch right now, but... Um, but yeah, so that's available. I did a stream for that. And then Wednesday, um, it's disability related and I probably would have actually done that on Monday, but like I said, I forgot it was uh, GA Conf day on Monday and I did a video for wheelchair simulator. Uh, it's a VR game that I've been sitting on for a little while now and it does some really interesting things. Um, like you're using the touch controllers to actually like push yourself like push the wheels forward or backward and to turn and all that stuff. And it feels actually pretty intuitive and, and uh, <clears throat> I think it works very well. So there are definitely some aspects of it that I think that work, um, that work really well. And there are some aspects of it that I kind of wish they wouldn't have gone maybe quite so arcadey. They could have had a, they could have had a really neat, um, kind of an immersive, like, educational experience kind of a thing going on. And there is some of that dialogue in the game. So, like, you know, talking about um, just, you know, a couple little lines of dialogue here and there that'll say, like, oh, you know, yeah, it is challenging to do this, or uh, this is how people perceive me, and whatever, because it's this narrated by this other guy. So check out that video. I mean, it's not blindness-related, but it, 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 there's some really interesting stuff about it, though. Uh, wheelchair Simulator VR. Um, God, what else? Like I said, it's been so crazy. Uh, I did my review of my iPhone last month. My iPhone XS Max. And I still do love it. Uh, you know, I'm still not perfectly sold on, tut or on Face ID. I've kind of come to grips with it. I've learned to... You know, I've kind of learned what I have to do, how I have to hold it to unlock it, and it's kind of becoming second nature to me. But I still would prefer Touch ID. Um, that being said, everything else on the phone has been great. You know, I mean, the audio, the video, the camera. Uh, I still haven't shot a video with it yet, and I really, really want to do that. Which leads me into another product that I, <clears throat> I wasn't originally going to purchase. However, you know, peer pressure, lack of willpower, being a nerd, and 
God knows whatever else. Yeah, I went and bought the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch 4th, uh, f- Series 4, that's what they call it. The Series 4. And the reason I did is because I actually got a decent trade-in value for my Series 3, including a refund for some unused Apple Care for that watch. So I'm like, you know... The bigger screen, the faster processor, I mean, voiceover is much more responsive for it. Um, So, and they're starting to do cool things with apps. Like if you follow on Twitter, um, you know, Audible works on the watch. You can transfer books to your watch. I just tried that today. And a little app that that I have been, you know, raving about on the channel the last few years Voice Dream Reader has an iOS beta right now that I'm in. Uh, they announced it. They, they were actually looking for uh, testers at, at, at uh, a couple days ago. I don't know if they still are. But, uh, yeah, Voice Dream Reader is uh, doing a watch app, and I've started playing with that a little bit. So in the next major version... You guys will probably have that to look forward to. So you know, it's it's kind of starting to starting to uh, get into its own thing. Maybe apps are maybe starting to come back a little bit to it. I hope so because to me, even like the Series Three, and the reason I bought it, it was kind of not fulfilling what I was hoping it was going to do. <clears throat> but lately, it's kind of picking up again. So I'm kind of intrigued to see where it goes. So I may try to do a review of that watch. Um, in the next, I don't know, next short while. So we got a hardware review there coming. Uh, of course, Apple has a iPad, Mac, whatever event on, what is it, the 30th? And I'm, I've said on the channel before, I'm still debating whether I'm going to get my parents an I, you know, the earlier 2018 iPad or give them my iPad Pro and go buy a new one. Guess we'll find out next week. If the new one is good enough for me to want to bother with that. So you never know, God. It just might be a very, very painful month and a half on ye old wallet. Um, So that's going to have to recover. But yeah, you never know. Um, So that, you know, that is coming up. But yeah, so I mean, it's been GA Conf, Halloween, um, Disability Employment Awareness Month. It's been new gadgets and gizmos and... (laughs) busy at work and it's just been like I said yeah I I got sick around the beginning of the month and then my internet completely went to crap for about a well yeah almost a week um I was I basically had I could kind of download things sometimes but not good like really really not good And uploading, (laughs) forget about it. Thank God I actually had a... See, this is where recording videos in advance and having things in the backlog comes in real handy. When your internet goes to complete shit, then you can actually, yeah, get on your phone and unlock a video or two now and again. So, you didn't even notice. Anyway, um, that's sort of what's coming up. Um, Like I said, a lot of videos out, a lot of videos coming, some hardware reviews... Uh, There's a couple other possible hardware reviews, product reviews that I might be trying to do here in the next while, Um, but I'm not going to say anything about that just yet here because I'm not sure. So yeah, um, lots to check out. And uh, again, for the people who did, are new to subscribe, uh, the people who are new subscribers, I do release videos Wednesdays and Saturdays. And beyond that, I may do bonus videos once or twice more in some weeks. Or this weekend, I'll probably be doing, like I said, a lot of them ramping up to something like Halloween. Um, Oh, another thing that I did, a couple things that I did, not directly related to the channel, but again, follow me. Follow me on Twitter, at BGFH79. And I'll announce when other things happen. Um... I recently was invited to be a guest on the Parallel Podcast, Parallel Pods, Parallel Pod or ParallelPods.com, I forget. Um, but I have linked to it on the Twitter, uh, my Twitter feed a couple times. 
Uh, but yeah, I was on the Parallel podcast, and uh, me and a couple of other people talked about like dark modes, uh, dark modes, and like high contrast stuff. Kind of you know like low vision things. You know maybe how dark modes can work, and when they clash against like high contrast or assistive technology versus built-in stuff. It was it was a pretty fun conversation. Uh, for eh, probably about about an hour or so and so yeah that episode is out came out a couple of weeks ago it is parallel parallel podcast number six and I also just recorded a pod another podcast with uh, somebody and I will link to that in my twitter feed once it is out and I can share that with you but in that conversation, um, we talked a little bit about, you know, overall accessibility. You know, what is accessibility, kind of differences between thinking about it in as it relates to, like, accessibility versus inclusive design, that kind of topic. And then we kind of moved more into a lot of the kind of entertainment and gaming um focuses so we talk you know we talked just a lot about like different how pl- different platforms did game accessibility and uh it, it was a just a pretty fun conversation so you know we kind of went all kinds of different places and so i'm thinking i don't know when he's going to release it but um that podcast should probably be coming up here probably pretty soon so yeah, I got the channel thing going, and now I'm starting, apparently, a podcast career. I think I've been on, like, what, four podcasts now so far? And it, it's been fun. So it's not just me babbling into the wind for God knows how long. I actually have other people to talk to in some, in, instead of just the voices in my head. So, hey, that works. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that is, um, that's kind of what's going on with the channel. Wednesdays and Saturdays, and then a bunch of stuff coming up. November, I have tons of videos I want to do and have done, and I don't know what schedule I'm going to do yet, but there's stuff coming. So I did want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, Disability Employment Awareness Month. Um, I, that's another thing I did through work, actually. I, I ended up kind of giving this sort of a talk uh, to a group of people at work and um, uh, students. And since it is Disability Employment Awareness Month, um, yeah, I figured I'd talk a little bit about just kind of some of my experiences in the past as it regards as it relates to employment, because um, I have been all over the place. In some ways, it's been really, really tough. In some ways, it's it's gotten way, way better the last several years. But yeah, it's been it's been an interesting path for sure. Um, you know, I mean, I went to college right after high school, um, started a degree, thought I was going to be a computer programmer. You know, I love computers. I love tech. I'd love to be able to program them and tell them what to do and make programs and games and whatever. And uh, there's a lot of math, which I'm okay at, but I really don't like. And I started taking a couple of programming classes and you know, as much as I love technology, I'm just not a programmer. Um, I always tell people the main thing that I learned in programming classes is that I suck at programming. So (laughs) that really wasn't going to be a thing. So midway through my original college career, I decided, oh, you know, okay, we're going to transfer. And I transferred to another school and went to a kind of a different major. And that generally tended to work out quite a bit better. I liked a lot of the classes there and learned quite a bit, made some good friends, and, uh, you know, went through that. And all through college, you know, even even at the first call, both colleges, um, I guess I could step back as far as jobs go. Like, I, you know, I grew up on a farm, so um, (laughs) I worked since I was you know, real young, because I would always work on the farm, whether it be working with animals, mowing lawns, working in gardens, whatever it happened to be. 
Um, I didn't get paid for it. You, he was just, you grew up on a farm, you were expected to work. You know, you're, you're blind, you're visually impaired, who cares? So what? Get get off your ass and work. That's basically the gist of what it was. Um, you know, and yeah, there were aspects of it. Yeah, I hated it at times. But, you know, I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad I went through it. Um, you know, you learn a lot and it, it helps. And in college, I worked... I worked a lot of different places in between classes and, um, you know, kind of working on project-based stuff whenever I, whenever I had time. So I'd work for a little bit through disability services, doing some projects. I did some training with people. I did, I worked in a library for a little short while. Um, I worked in our technology center. I wrote, I basically wrote a help, uh, wrote a help system for a kind of a, a tool, a, a math, uh, a math tool that one of the instructors and the faculty had created in the tech department because a lot of the classes used this system for kind of like online. It was kind of before things like, you know, you had Blackboard, we had WebCT back then. But it was really kind of before they kind of did their own proprietary little downloadable module program thingy that you had. So I worked on the help system and wrote that. Um, but all kinds of stuff, you know. And aside from really doing educational stuff, you know, start, in, start as soon as you can. If you get a, you know, maybe you babysit. If you work, like I said, you're mowing lawns if you can see well enough to do that. You do odd jobs for people when you're in high school. Maybe you work at a, you, know, you get a summer job and you work at a, sh a store or something. Because uh, you knew, you want those different job experiences. A, it helps you find out what you like and don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at. Um, maybe you want, maybe you're not good at something, but you want to learn it and go, eh, maybe I'd like to get into this more. But you got to build that resume because you, when you when you're looking for a more substantial job, one of the dilemmas is it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, you look at job postings and they say, oh, well, we want X degree or Y year, number of years experience. Well, if you're new in the employment, you know, if you're new to getting jobs, how do you? Okay, you want experience. But how do I get experience? Like if every job wants experience, X number of experience, how do I get that X number of years experience? So, you know, in, in showing that you can not only have a job, but hold down a job, especially as a blind person or a visually impaired person, you know, yeah, I'm going to go right out and say it. We, we have to work. A lot harder we have to work probably twice as hard as everybody else does because there's all these you know uh expect low expectations or incorrect stereotypes about what people think that that we or can or can't do um and you have you know we have to be able to basically prove you know it's like oh yeah we have to prove that not only can we do things but we can do them just as well as everybody else does i mean sure we'll need help just like everybody does sometimes but you know, work just as capable. Um, you know, so getting that job and being able to hold it for a while so that you can say, oh, yeah, I've held this job for, you know, I had it two summers in a row or I worked the whole year as a work-study job in college or whatever it is. That is going to be really, really helpful so that you have some job experience because, yeah, you're – your grades and your college stuff, that does factor into it, but I think actual like real world experience is a lot more really helpful. So back to school, um, you know, I got my undergrad degree and so I was like, okay, well, some people said, Oh, you should get a master's and I'm like, No, I wanna make some money. I wanna I need to be able to live on my own. Um, I'm glad that programs like SSI and SSDI are there. I used them back in the day, uh, especially SSI. 
but I can't tell you how glad I am to be off of it because, I, A, I just like to know that, hey, I'm just like everybody else. I don't have to collect a government check every month. I can save up money and buy things. I can get a job. I can support myself. I can live independently. Uh, you know, I can be self-reliant just like everybody else. Um, and on top of that, it was always just such a pain to work, especially within the SSI system, because, you know, any, any little bit counted against you and like they would screw it up and they say, Oh, we overpaid you. Oh, now you, we underpaid you. And Oh, we, now we overpaid you and you owe us five grand. I'm like, like hell I do. (laughs) So it was just this battle of, you know, keeping records and fighting with them. And no, um, the moment I, the moment I was making enough to go, "Hmm, I don't really need to, I don't really need this check anymore. See ya. I, I reported it to them and never looked back. Like I said, I'm glad it's there for people who need it, but I don't like to use it as a crutch. Um, it's just because it's comfortable or just because it's there. You know, it's like, oh, well, it's free money. Well, no, it's taxpayer money, but that's a whole other issue. But so after college, that was after my undergrad degree, that was where it was really tough because... Again, if you grew up on a farm, well, you really can't exactly go. I mean, my parents were great. I mean, they offered like, well, if you need to come home and live with us, you know, until you find a job, you can. And I said, well, thanks. Uh, I appreciate that. But (laughs) you live in the middle of nowhere. I can't drive. (laughs) If I get an interview, if I get several, if I get many interviews, how am I going to get there? So at the very least, I have to live somewhere where I can take a bus in a town. I can take a cab. Now we, I mean, we didn't have Uber and Lyft back then. Hell, I didn't have a smartphone back then. That was right even before kind of Windows Mobile and stuff was out. I had a crappy, my first cell phone was the, oh God, it was a Samsung flip phone. And the reception on the thing was freaking terrible. I hated that phone. Because I, I had to go literally run downstairs and go outside to answer the phone uh, because it just didn't work. And then when I got a later phone, it worked a lot better. But um, I just totally lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, I mean, so after co- like I said, after college, um, I couldn't live at home because I couldn't get anywhere, but I didn't have a job to really support myself. And even back then, you know, again, yeah, I had SSI, but I could barely, I couldn't live on my own hardly on an SSI check and, you know, make a living or like pay all my bills, have, let alone have any money left over for entertainment or anything like that. But I found a way to make it work, you know? Um, you know, again, I, I actually posted a, a thread on AppleViz about a week ago about uh, everyone asking for coupon codes. I just, I've seen it so, so many times and it's just, it finally broke me. I'm like, I got to say something, you know, we kind of, we live in an instant gratification world right now and, oh yeah, it would be great to have this new app or game that is coming out right away. But, you know, developers got to support themselves. The develop, you know, it's not, they're not going to develop or update themselves. Um, and we may not be able to get it right away, but, you know, God forbid, maybe we got to wait a paycheck or wait a month uh, before we can grab this app or whatever it is we're looking to do. And that's what I did. Like, I had to literally say, okay, I'm really into games. I know, you know, I'd watch the E3 stuff. Uh, that was when they just first started to kind of do some streaming and video coverage and things. And I would say, okay, well, I have, you know, there's two or three things that I absolutely, I really, really have to play. And so I, I just didn't buy things, you know. I waited and I said, okay, well, I know this is coming out in November and I better have 60 bucks by November or else I wait. So it's called budgeting. <laughs> Um, 
sighted people have to do it all the time. You know, they, they have to make decisions about what, you know, they have to make decisions that they can't just buy everything. They don't have state, state agencies to buy them everything. Um, you know, they got to decide, am I going to pay bills? Am I going to buy food? Or am I going to do this entertainment or renovate my home or whatever it is? They got to make those decisions probably a lot more than blind or vision impaired people do. But that's why I bring that up is I was dirt poor. <laughs> um, I actually got a couple roommates for a couple of years and that was really the only way that I was <laughs> able to survive halfway decently because we got to split the rent, we split the cable and the internet. Um, yeah, and that's just what we did. And so that whole time, I was unemployed after getting my undergrad degree. I was unemployed for three and a half years. And while I had some, I had a lot of fun with my roommates and stuff in some ways, that was the longest and hardest three years of my, three and a half years of my life because. You know, again, you literally don't have any money. Like, I couldn't, you know, my friend, he, he could go, oh, I'm going to go grab a burger at Hardee's or something. I literally couldn't afford to get a burger <laughs> very often. Um, yeah, I was that broke. Um, I was paying bills with my credit cards. So then after I got a job, I had to pay the credit cards down because I was paying my paying my utilities with a credit card because that's what I had to do to survive. I, you know, um, while I was doing this three and a half year without a job or a school, it wasn't because I wasn't trying. Uh, I was constantly applying for jobs. I literally had folders on my computer and whole whole bunch of documents like cover letters and resume templates because I was applying for a lot of different types of jobs anything from like help desk to accessibility to just whatever I could find them like eh, I could probably do that I was applying for jobs I mean you ha if you really want to find a job you have to work at it and treat the job search as if it was your full time job. I would work seven, eight hours a day, maybe sometimes even more if I was on a roll and, and trying to apply for something or I found a lot of leads that I wanted to follow. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to apply for a job and hope I get it or, you know, have a career counselor apply for me or whatever. You got to treat, you got to treat that like a full-time job because if you can't do the full job search independently, are you ready to, are you ready to have a job? You know, I mean, if I can't apply for a job, what makes me ready for a job? And now I understand there are some websites that are terrible. You know, you try to do, you try to fill out a, a form on some of these websites. Maybe they have some CAPTCHA or maybe their forms are just complete garbage. I get that. But overall, you know, I mean, we can search if you have internet skills, um, we can search and apply for jobs. Because that's where it all is these days. So I was applying for jobs. And I was getting a lot of interviews. I was getting a lot of phone interviews. I got several in-person interviews. And for whatever reason, I mean, I even had a couple people fly me out uh, to their site. And so I thought, oh, this looks pretty good. And I didn't end up landing the jobs. And I never really heard why. Like, I would get rejection letters, um, which they don't even really do that much anymore. Um, the joke was, I thought, you know, that, oh, I could wallpaper my apartment with these stupid things. Um, but I, like I said, I applied, I got interviews I got in-person interviews and it's like okay if I get the interviews and I'm still not landing them what is the problem so I actually went back to my college and I talked to the career uh, career office there the job services office and I sat down with a person or two and I said hey 
let's do a, a, a mock interview or two and tell me where, if, or where I'm going wrong. Because I'm like, well, it's got to be something in my interview style or what is, am I saying something wrong? Am I leaving something out? What is it? Um, they gave me some good tips, you know, I mean, but overall they said that it was, you know, that my interviewing skills were solid. Um, you know, you have to sell yourself well with confidence, but you don't want to say things that, oh yeah, I can do this. And then you really can't, you don't really want to do that either. You want to admit when you don't know something, but you know, you, your, your whole job there is to sell yourself. And I thought that I did that pretty well. So I got help with that. Um, so pretty soon what was happening, you know, you get two, two and a half years in to this job search. And what happened is during these interviews, you were getting, I was getting asked this question of like, so I see your last job was, you know, a couple of years ago. Your major, last major job was a couple of years ago. What have you been doing since? And I had done a couple, like, few hour volunteer contract things here and there or something after graduation just to have something going on. But I said, I mean, largely my answer was is I, I, I've been applying for jobs. I, I diligently, diligently have been applying for jobs. I want to work. And I don't know if that just wasn't cutting it or whatever, um, but that's really what I had to say. So a little while in, you know, I, I hadn't ruled the idea of a master's degree out, but I'm like, well, I can't get a job. Maybe I can, you know, I mean, I know going to school to be a professional student isn't the answer either, but like, okay, maybe I can specialize in something. So I was kind of looking into options and I looked into the instructional design instructional design and technology masters and I decided yeah you know that's something I could do like I've I've taken technical writing classes I have a tech I had a IT information technology and management degree and a, a technical communication minor I'm like I you know I've written a help system before a full help system I'm an, a decent writer I'm not you know, I don't have an imagination to write fiction or anything like that, but I could write some technical documents. Okay, I could do instructional design. I'm, I think I could be reasonably good at that. So I checked into it, and I started a online degree in instructional design, where we had, it was, it was a mixed, it was like a blended, uh, blended degree, where in a lot of classes you actually met once a week online, through some sort of audio video, you know, uh, you had some people in a classroom and some people online. And by the time I graduated with my master's, it was funny. The guy had said, yeah, when this program, cause I started kind of when the, that program started, it was a really new graduate level program. And they said the first couple, you know, the first year or so you would have 75% people 80% of people in the classroom and a few people online. By the end, you had one or two people in the classroom and you had everybody else online and they could be all over the country. So I started that. And so I started the degree and wouldn't you know it like less than six months in because it was, I was literally into my first semester. I got a lead. It wasn't really a, it wasn't a permanent job. It wasn't even like a really f well paying job, excuse me, job, but I got a lead on a, an AmeriCorps position that kind of sounded up my alley and might be a way to get into what I was thinking about doing, you know, or at least a path I could go down. And it was working through AmeriCorps, working at a couple of public libraries in their computer because, uh, you know, libraries have a lot of computers and they also wanted to, they had these accessibility, these accessible workstations with things like JAWS and ZoomText and Dragon and these different things and nobody was using them. So they really wanted to get people kind of edu to educate the public on what they were, maintain it, you know, get people interested in using those computers and educating library staff and all that kind of stuff. So 
Yeah, I started that. I started that in like October, maybe early November, late October, early November of that year, and I worked there for about nine months because it was a year long gig. With AmeriCorps, you can work like one year, and sometimes you can extend it to two, which I thought I would have to do. And toward the end of it, uh, like March or April, I learned of a job. And again, you know, sometimes you have to be willing. Like, I know maybe you like to live in a small town or maybe you, there are certain things that you want to do. But, you know, I didn't necessarily want to move to Florida. But, um, I, you know, when I did the job search, earlier, I was looking nationwide. Yeah, I would look locally harder, but I looked nationwide. And uh, a job lead came in for an assistive technology instructor, but it was clear across halfway across the country. Uh, I applied for it. I remember getting the call. I was sweltering in my living room, uh, plopped my mattress on the floor because of my air conditioner actually worked in the living room. And I remember waking up to a phone call with the job offer saying, hey, we want to offer you this job. Um, would, do you want, would do you accept this job offer? And I'm like, okay, yes, I'll take it. So I had to hurry up and finish my AmeriCorps duties. And then I moved down. Like I said I didn't really necessarily want to move to Florida. I wasn't opposed to it. But hey, you know what? You go where the job is. You go where you can make a living. Um, so I moved down there and I worked there for a few years and I learned, you know, learned a lot there. I mean, like I said, everywhere that I'd been up to that point, I'd, I'd known somebody, I had friends or I had family of friends or family or, you know, usually it was family of friends or friends, Florida. I didn't know anybody. I hopped on an Amtrak and I went down longest train ride of my life. I And without a sleeper car, I really don't recommend that trip. It was like 51 hours, and God, I was tired by the time I got down there. But uh, I went down there, and um, yeah, I worked as a technology instructor, and we we worked in kind of a nonprofit world there, and that was a busy time, and it got a lot of experience there. And then I got, I got about th- actually three, three and a half years there as well. I, I got a, I got wind of another job offer kind of back up north, closer to where I grew up in a bigger city. And I applied for it thinking, not a chance, whatever, you know, I mean, I'll keep working here, but I'll apply because it sounded interesting. I wouldn't mind working there. And uh, they called me for the interview and they just grilled me this interview was really interesting because they literally just grilled me with it wasn't an interview as much as it was a test I mean there were I think it was like fifth somewhere between like 50 and 54 questions of like what is this assistive technology or what is this the command to do this or if this user account if this user can account error happened or came up what does that mean I mean, it was a really technical, you had to know not just assistive technology, but mainstream technology, IT, you had to know all kinds of things. And I think I only missed like two or three questions and a large little, those were like Mac. And at that time I hadn't used a Mac, Um, but I did well on the interview and believe it or not, they actually called me for the job and I got it. Um... And that's where I've been ever since. Um, But like I said, the the key things is I think you really have to be flexible. You have to be open to do, you know, like, yeah, I've never done it before. Um, But, you know, like I said, I don't want to sit at home collecting a a government check that I can barely live on anyway the rest of my life. Um, I want to support myself. And like I said, I've moved away from all my family and friends to get down where I was. Then I moved across the country and then I moved back, back up kind of near there where I started. Um, but it's been a wild ride when I was in Florida, I was teaching to computers, but a couple months in my supervisor came to me and said, yeah, we have, you, you know, Braille, you can read and write Braille. There's a, you know, there's a person who actually wants to learn some grade one Braille so they can learn some, uh, 
you know, do some Braille labeling in their home. Can you teach uh, Braille? <laughs> I said, well, I've never done it before. I know Braille well enough that I probably could. So I not only did I teach computers, but I, I not only did I teach one person, but I probably over the course of my time there had... <sighs> two to four Braille students. And I largely improvised a Braille curriculum, pulled that out of my butt, um, winged it and started coming up with, like I said, with my own curriculum, my own kind of exercises. And then we kind of, then we got them to help us get a more stable curriculum. Um, but I learned a lot by just diving in and trying that, you know, I mean, like somebody would told me, you know, back then, like, Oh, you're going to teach technology. You're going to teach Braille. You're going to have a YouTube channel. You're going to be doing this, that, and the other thing. I probably would have laughed, especially at the teaching part of it. Um, considering how much I used to hate school in elementary school, I would have really laughed at you. But you never, you, know, you never know where your life is going to go. You just got to go with it. And like I said, just try stuff. The other thing that I would say is like you really have to know, it doesn't matter what field you're going into, you really have to know your assistive technology and have a few options, you know, to back things up. Like, let's say I'm a Braille reuser and I prefer like, yeah, I pref would prefer everything in hard copy Braille. And that way I can have, you know, the whole page and I can easily read it. And yeah, that's great. But in the education world where you're, you know, you're getting last minute assignments in college in the employment world where everything is, can be unpredictable you're realistically not going to have that. So, you know, I mean, yeah, you can have hard copy Braille where, you know, when you can, you know, but we have refreshable Braille displays. Or if you're low vision, you know, maybe you use Zoom text, but, oh, you got to go into a meeting or you have to go to something where you don't have access to Zoom text. Well, if you know Windows Magnifier, you know, and if you can see well enough to read with that, it may not be perfect. It may not have all of your mouse and cursor enhancements and your speechy stuff. But the point is, you can walk up to any Windows computer and still have magnification or speech with narrator or NVDA on a thumb drive or glass brick, another free magnifier. So knowing multiple, you know, knowing your screen reader well knowing your assistive technology, your magnifier, or whatever it is, well, um, is really helpful. If you're a Windows user, no multiple screen, no multiple tools. Like if I'm a screen reader user, maybe, I, maybe, maybe I know JAWS, but it's a good idea to know NVDA because why not? It's free. There are times where one screen reader will work better than the other or not work as well as the other one. You know, if you're a Mac user, yeah, you know, no voiceover, no zoom, um, granted on Mac, you don't have quite as many options. Um, you know, that's kind of what you have, but on both platforms, you have OCR technology. You know, you have KNFB reader on windows 10, or if you really need to be, you know, if you really need the, a lot more advanced stuff, you have Kurzweil 1000 and open book. If you are on the Mac, you have Abbey fine reader or, uh, um, DocuScan Plus. DocuScan Plus also works PC and Windows on one license. Um, you know, so having multiple tools. <coughs> and one of the, you know, one of the techn technical skills I think most important in, call in school or employment, I think, is knowing how to navigate the Internet. Because in college, essentially, if you're working with, uh, you know, Moodle, D2L, Blackboard, Schoology, God knows what other learning management system they have now. All they are is a bunch of web pages. You know, I mean, that's basically what they are. You go to a website and you log in and you do stuff. And most of their, the sites are generally okay. <coughs> but where the problem occurs is the content that gets put into them. Excuse me. It's the, you know, when they, when somebody scans in a PDF file as an image and nothing can read it, 
JAWS, Zoom Text, NVDA, VoiceOver can't read it. You know, what do you do? Well, <coughs> you could be lost and, you know, talk to disability services or whatever. Or you could know that, oh, I have a program on my computer. I have KNFB Reader or Abby or whatever. Or I have, <coughs> excuse me, I can open it on my phone. And I can use KNFB Reader on my phone. Or Seeing AI. Um, I have tools that I don't have to wait for somebody to convert this for me. I know how to do it myself, and then I don't fall behind. You know, same thing with work. I go in to meet with a client, they hand me some piece of paper that they want me to read, or if I'm in a meeting, they hand me a handout or something, I need to read it. I have a couple of options. I can use my phone as a CCTV. I can use it as uh, a, you know, I can use it to read something aloud. Um, a lot of different options there. So, <clears throat> you know, and knowing, I think just knowing what, you know, how do you like to read things, you know, how do you best access information? Are you an audible learner? If so, know how to do voice memos on your iPhone. Maybe have a digital recorder. Something like maybe the MicroSpeak. Uh, I like that one. Um, but have maybe having a digital digital recorder. Um, if you have a if you're a Braille user, do you have a um, do you have a refreshable Braille display? Something like the Braille Edge or something. Um, do you have, you know, in, in some cases you may have access to a Braille writer or a slate and stylus or whatever it happens to be. Um, but just being able to, you know, take down information, record information, whatever. Um, if you're low vision, maybe you have a 2020 pen, you have some bold line paper, you have whatever, but, you know, that's going to be important, um, you know, for employment. So just knowing how you read and like, you know, being able to communicate with your instructor or your boss or whatever, you know, it's like, oh, can you email me this information because it's easier for me to read? Or, you know, as long as it's kind of reasonable, you know, a reasonable accommodation, um, <clears throat> you know, those are things that can, you know, that, that can be done. Um, but, you know, being flexible, knowing your technology um, knowing what works for you, you know, having, having, you know, and if you can go into one of the things I forgot to mention when I go in, when I went into an interview, one of the things that I didn't do right away, but I started doing as I went on and I found helped greatly come in, you know, come to your interview prepared. Um, <clears throat> you know, you know that they they can't technically ask you legally about your disability, but you can kind of, you know, you can nip that in the bud right away because <clears throat> you can say, you know, um, yes, you know, it, it may be obvious that I have a vision impairment, um, but I have my laptop with me or I have my phone with me and have a couple of tasks in mind that you're going to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe have a dummy document template that you can just open up a Word document and show them how quickly you can fly around and you know, change the formatting of a document, maybe fix some spell check thing, you know, spell check a few words, um, you know, edit something, you know, that you, you can type fast. I mean, it's little things like that. Like, you know, people say, oh, well, he might be able to do it, but he's going to be way slower than the sighted people. Um, and knowing that, or, you know, people say, well, how would you access this information? Have your Android or iPhone ready, you know, and say, oh, okay, hand me a piece of paper with some text on it. Pop open Prismo Go or Seeing AI or KNFB Reader <clears throat> and take a picture and have it read aloud. Show them your magnifier and you know, it's like, oh, if I got to a meeting and this is this is how I would handle that. Um, you know, the, I bring bring with a portal, you know, a handheld CCTV if you got something like a Ruby. Um, whatever, you know, just something you don't have to spend a lot of time and dwell on it. But basically, again, you have to prove yourself almost more capable than your sighted competitors, your sighted applicants. Um, <clears throat> you know, those are the things that kind of tip the scales a little bit and just can kind of at least, you know, make them not worry because the first thing they'll probably think of is, oh, this is going to cost money for accommodations or can he do the job or will he get hurt? I mean, all kinds of kind of ridiculous, 
misconceptions and assumptions that people have, but those are those are kind of some of the things that I've learned, you know, over time. You know, and like I said, just being able to really know, not just sequentially how to do things. I can't stress this enough too. You know, not just sequentially, okay, I know I have to hit the start menu or the alt key. Then I arrow down twice. Then I tab three times. That's not learning. That is just memorizing some sequence of commands. If any, and we all know on the computer or any technology, things change super fast. You learn stuff that way, any minor little change happens, you're screwed. You know, uh, any minor little change hiccup happens, well, now I have to arrow four times, but if I can't think my way out of that situation, pfft, you're done. So learning, you know, why are you going to the alt menu? <clears throat> why are you going to the, the edit menu and then tabbing three times? Oh, because I'm going to this specific option because it's what I want to do. Or, you know, <clears throat> if I'm on a web page, why am I hitting H? Why am I hitting the E button to find an edit field? Oh, it's because I'm trying to log in or I need to do a search. Um, you know, you, you can't really just get a buy with, you know, people go, oh, I know, I know the internet really well. I, I can use JAWS and, or a screen reader in the internet. And then it's tab, 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 or arrow, arrow, arrow. Yeah, I suppose you could navigate the internet that way, but you'll be there till especially with as complex and large as web pages are now, you'll be there till next Christmas um, doing it. So you do have to be able to make use of things like quick nav and your find and, you know, links list and, you know, do a control F that can be really helpful. Um, you know, cause you not only be able to, you not only have to be able to do the job, but you have to do it on a competitive level with everybody else. You know, I mean, there can be some adaptations made, maybe you need a little more time here and there, but, um, <clears throat> those are just some of the things that you, you know, you kind of have to be kind of have to do. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of, I know I probably missed a few things here and there, but just, those are some kind of tips that I would have as far as kind of both education and employment, but especially focusing more on, you know, long-term thinking about, oh, getting a job, even if I am going to college, the end goal is getting a job, uh, and supporting myself and earning a disposable, in disposable income so I can buy apps and games and gadgets and new furniture for my apartment or house or whatever is important to you, go to concerts or something. Um, pay your bills, all that fun stuff. So, you know, that, that's kind of some of the, you know, I said, I've been through, I've been through, you know, I've been through a lot. I, I've been dirt broke, so it's not like I haven't been there myself. Um, <laughs> um, you know, pay, like I said, paying bills with credit cards probably not the best way to go about things, but when you got to do it, you got to do it. You know, I didn't have people bailing me out for much of what I did. Um, I paid for graduate school on my own, um, bought computers on my own. Um, you know, I got some help from, yeah, I, I definitely, like I said, I got some help from SSI early on. I got some help from, uh, a state agency, but once I got that, I moved on. I didn't keep coming back every time I like, ah, I think I need something else. So I'll go ask, I'll go ask my VR counselor. Once I felt that I was kind of getting my foot back under me again, I ran with it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, now, I mean, knock on wood, but things are going pretty well. I've got a good job doing some fun stuff on the side, doing some, you know, like I said, these beta tests and doing the channel, um, <clears throat> working with game and VR accessibility, doing all kinds of stuff. So, it, you know, sometimes it takes a while, but um, you get there. Hopefully that, ra that rambling meant something. Hopefully it helped some people out or has helped somebody out. But I did want to do something for disability employment Awareness Month, because even in, like at work and personal life and just in general, like I, I feel like I have a lot of experience. I have a lot 
a uh, lot to say because I've been on both sides of everything. So anyway, uh, it's been a long video again, but hope you guys, again, hope you guys watch it. Hope you guys found it helpful. Like the video if you did. Share it with other people. Again, go back and check out the videos for Windows 10 accessibility features, the two videos on uh, magnification, low vision features and magnification, and then the narrator stuff. Those are also great things that came out or, that I did earlier this month. Uh, keep an eye on my Twitter feed for my podcast appearances. Uh, follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. You can follow me on Mixer. Hope to do one of those streams again here maybe this weekend. Mixer.com slash BGFH. And we'll wrap it up there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And lots more to come up to Halloween. Happy Halloween. Eat lots of candy. And uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll wrap it up here. And I'll talk to you guys again later.